Hi there. So it's after midnight, I just finished most of my work and I'll be going to bed in a few, but I still have a few minutes before I'm going for my rest time. I wanted to make a video and just give some content back. So I watched a video on Rich 150X and one person was asking me if doing like, you know, using marijuana or like cannabis, does it damage uh, ubis? Like, is it damaging to your outer body experiences, stuff like that? So here's my thought of this whole thing. And just before I go on to this whole thing, if you are using cannabis, if you're using like any psychedelics and stuff, please share your experiences and if it's helping you or not. Because for for myself, like I'm a straight edge, so I haven't used any alcohol. I, I don't smoke. I don't you know use any I'll, any of those. So that goes with the cannabis as well. I haven't used cannabis or or the psychedelic, psychedelic mushrooms and stuff like that. Uh, that being said, I did talk to people who who did that. I've read about it. I've watched videos and stuff. So for from what I was looking at and like the research I did, people are getting the experience and it enhances it and it helps them, but it mostly works for the first timers. If you are using the cannabis or any psychedelics for the first time, you're probably getting the enough DMT, like not too much where you go crazy, but enough that helps you to easily smooth into that ubi world and just like have that a pretty good experience when you're out or just astral projection or even lucid dreams. So I think like for the first timers, it's going to be more helpful. For those who are using uh, you know, cannabis more often, I believe that some some people get like more adjusted to it. Like, you know, like my, my brother uses weed and stuff. So yeah, first times were good for him and he was able to like see stuff and like experience a bit more. But after that, like, you know, the more he used it, the more used he got to it. So he stopped getting most of the benefits like his body like adjusted really fast so i guess every person is different like you know it's going to be the, the individual experience for everyone but you know just keeping in mind like the more you're going to use it the pro probably the more you're going to get like use the whole cannabis thing so it's not going to have the same effect as in the beginning so if you are the starter or you're like planning like hey should i use cannabis to get my ubi uh 50 50 because there are tons of other ways you can get ubi and our lungs is the organ that literally generates DMT itself. So if you plan to like use the like cannabis for the first time to enhance your experience of ubi, before you go there, try doing the deep breathing. Because literally, if you look into the Wim Hof and like use that method of like breathing, and you can like watch his videos and do the breathing with him, he's gonna pretty much show you how to use it correctly. And you can literally do like practice every day, like five minutes a day, a little bit. But like it's gonna be enough time for you to like use the breathing. It's gonna be helpful for like you know, just getting oxygen in your body and just helping yourself. But at the same time, you're gonna get the chemical itself that's gonna be helpful for you to get out of body. So that being said. I think that people who use psychedelics and stuff, they might get benefits if they are doing it for the first time or they, they took a break for quite a while and they're doing it again. So I think like that's going to be helpful and help you to generate the whole experience and just have a better thing going. But you might get used to it, so probably not a good idea. And I'm not saying that you should not use those things. Like, hey, it's, it's pretty helpful. We know why the system is like making it illegal and stuff. So, hey, come on, use it if you like it. Uh, but anyway. And there, like, there are some other things that I could recommend to you that what I did, what I've heard from other people as well, is, you know, like, as I say, deep breathing. But also, if you are not allergic to it, try eating oranges. Because oranges will help you to lift your vibrations and also, like, adjust your diet and stuff like that, help you, like, with detox and blah, 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 like, all those fancy things. The best thing is raising your vibration. Because Dr. Robert Morse, he tried eating oranges only, just oranges, nothing else, for three months. So for three months he was eating just oranges, but what happened is his vibration got so freaking high that he had a hard time staying inside the body. Like he would go out of body and just have tons of out of body experiences because his vibration was so freaking high. So this is what uh, we can do. Like if we do the deep breathing, if we eat oranges, if we have enough money and our diet allows it, if you can do it, like try, practice that. So instead of using like cannabis for the first time and like thinking, okay, I can't get out of body, but I'll choose. I'll try using cannabis and see if it's gonna help me. If you are afraid of it, like I, I haven't tried it myself. I might. I don't know. Like I'm still like 50-50 on this whole subject. But like for me, I'm having tons of hard body experiences by itself without needing any simulations and stuff. But what I'm doing is I'm staying away from like watching movies 
or like certain things. Like I have, I have a list of things that I'm not gonna do because I know it's gonna suppress my abilities to get out of body. Which is like eating certain foods, like you know, more of uh, meat products, dairy products, and stuff like that. Like junk food is gonna suppress and calcify your pineal gland. Watching movies or having like blue screen in front of you, like you know, the the phone, like the PC and TV. Like, have at least an hour before you go to bed, away from the screens, because it's gonna, like, turn off the simulation. As in, you're watching a movie, and after a long day you're relaxing, but what it does is, like, it simulates your experience, so instead of going out of body and creating it all yourself, you just had a whole movie showing you everything, so your, your body's not gonna even bother to help you with that. So you turn off everything by watching, you know, your, your movies, your, like, Netflix and stuff, and you go to bed and like, I want to have Ubi, but you've just binged four hours of Netflix. You've just simulated the whole night experience, you don't expect anything. So, you know, take a break from electronics, like take a, take a break from your phones, your PC, your TV, at least an hour before going to bed. So that's going to be helpful. Uh, instead, what helps is reading books, because when you're reading, people will sort of start visual visualizing. So if you have a, like a novel or some other book, that has like a story and if you can sort of see it or imagine it in your world and if you don't have visuals that's okay because you can read it so it's sort of it's already simulating the whole experience as in in a good way it, it helps you to create it instead of like show it to you and your stuff so uh drawing or like playing music not listening to music there's not putting the earphones there's like la la no 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 play it yourself like try to creating like you pick up the guitar or the instrument if you have it and if, and if you know how to play it you can also learn how to play it. This doesn't, doesn't mean like you have to know everything. Like no, just pick up and try doing it, because that also simulates your thing. Drawing and whole simulation thing, like I mean, drawing and painting and all this stuff. If you if you can be creative, that's gonna be helpful. So that being said, you can also keep journals. One is like keeping your dream journal. So if you have any dreams of you know your your dreams, regular dreams, lucid dreams, out of body experiences, astral projections, if you have any of those, write them down. If you are too tired, do the audio. Like, pick up your phone, because you're probably sleeping with your phone, so pick up the phone and do the, like, just tell you, tell, tell, you, tell your phone what you've dreamed about, what happened, all of the, the, the details you can remember. If you are too tired of that, if you have your, you know, like, some, like your partner sleeping next to you, if you have your, your dog, your cat, or even the wall, tell your wall about your dream. You know, so just sharing it out loud is also improving your memory. So... That's like, you know, keeping a dream journal. Another thing is keeping the fake dream journal. Now, the fake dream journal is basically, you can imagine the experience that you want to have and you can write it down. So during the day, if you have a five minutes, and of course you have, it also depends on how, like, you use your time and all the priorities you have in your life. But if you can take, like, at least one minute away from everything and just write about your dream that you want to have and as if you've already had it. So like this fake Ubi or dream journal and you're just like, oh, I just, I had the most amazing Ubi experience. I was there and I did this and I had so much fun and this is what I've learned, blah, blah, blah. And you're just like simulating it and like you wrote it down. Well, what happens is that when you visualize things and that's when we are turning on our reticular activating system. So our filters turn in a way that this is what happened and your brain cannot tell the difference between what you imagined and what you experienced in real life. So if you imagine like you've had that experience, your brain will believe it. And what happens is that you are simulating the process for your brain and it starts believing that yes, you can get out of body. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you are able. Yes, you have all the abilities. So the more you practice, the more you are sort of putting that thought like I can get out of body into your brain and your brain will help you to like create all the chemicals because now it believes that it can. So like you have that availability going on and your brain will start like helping you to get the whole thing going like and just make you <laughs> get out of body. So there's that. There's also spinning. Spinning, uh, just a simple example like that. You stand up and you spin around in one place and do it like a hundred times or a thousand times or well, probably not too much, but like, you know, 10 times, 20 times. But what happens is that over here, when we spin around, our consciousness is moving out of body. But if you can literally stand around in one place and just spin around for like, you know, for a little while, as long as you don't get too dizzy, just like safety first, you know, take care, like make, make sure you're safe and stuff like that. But if you can spin around and make sure that you're safe and stuff, one is, is helping you to move the consciousness out of the body. If you are spinning when you're inside the dream, it prolongs it. So you can literally be in a dream and you know that like, oh damn, I'm waking up. What do you do? You start spinning. 
what what happens is that you are spinning and your consciousness prolongs and stays inside there longer so you can like enjoy your experience there and stuff like that <sighs> that aside you when when you wake up try being quiet when you wake up we usually we usually tend to open our eyes check our phone get up do something we're all engaged we're all thinking about what we're gonna do the coffee we're gonna drink and stuff like that we, we wake up and we're in a hurry to start our day and do something so instead of that, if you have a moment, and of course you probably will, a moment of quietness. You wake up, you try to close your eyes or don't open your eyes at all for, for like a minute. Don't, don't open your eyes, don't think about stuff, which is going to be hard, but just trying not to think about anything the moment you wake up is going to help you to remember your dream, just recall it naturally, because this, this is what happens, we have the memory. And if you are able to not think about your day and what you're going to do, or your phone or anything, your brain will sort of give you back the memory. So you wake up, you have the quiet mind, you practice it, and the memory comes back by itself. So there's another thing. You can also practice dying. <laughs> you literally wake up from a dream, or wake up in the morning, and what you practice is like, you know, you pretend that you died. But what happens is, in that little moment, your consciousness leaves the body. <laughs> so you can literally... It's, it's probably, I'm not sure if it's, gonna, if it's gonna work for everyone or not, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna practice some that, and you're trying not to breathe and stuff, and then you start, like, choking, like, oh, you know, like, shit might happen like that. So instead of that, like, just, just, like, as soon as soon you drop dead, but you, like, you still breathe and stuff, you simulate your, because your body's doing it naturally and stuff like that, but your consciousness is more like, yeah, I'm out, like, fuck this place, so you can still get out and still get back into the dream and keep on going. Or dream ubis, astral projections, like all of that stuff. It's it's totally possible. So again, you know, deep breathing because you can simulate the, the DMT by yourself with your lungs. Uh, eating oranges if you can. All of these little practices, like little things to do every day. But uh, I feel like if you want to get out of body, like it's not going to be a thing. If your priority is to get out of body, you find five minutes a day, and this is enough time to practice all of these things, and you can you can have a go. So. That being said, when you are trying to get out of body, ask yourself, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to get out of body? Why do you want to have this experience? What do you want to see different stuff? Because once you have a good enough goal that's going to motivate you, it's going to like pretty much keep you going and it's not going to be like, yeah, it's just for fun. Well, for fun, you can do other things. Like your, your body is not going to help you out with creating chemicals to inspire you and help you out. So what you need to do is have good enough goal that's going to motivate you to like practice every day or as much as possible. So now that you're done, now that you're done with your goal and stuff, you just keep practicing putting like your little schedules of what you're gonna do during the day, little daily routines. And once that is done, I think also what might help is affirmations. Uh, affirmations is in like you know I can get out of body, and literally you repeat to yourself in your mind. You can repeat it out loud. You can write it down. Like I can get out of body. I am I am having out of body experience. It's it's, it's easy to get out of body. I'm like, you know, like all kinds of things, but you just repeat it. I literally had a journal like this, like I need to shove all my stuff away from this whole thing. But for example, like stuff like that. And like, I just have like tons of pages from my notes of sessions I'm giving. Every, every one of those is like an item for a person. But literally take this whole notebook and every line you see, like every single line like that, you just fill it with, I'm having an, an out of body experience. And I wrote it down for like a thousand times. Like, you know, write a page or two pages or three pages. I wrote down as much as I could, like, before going to sleep. And what happens is I made myself think that I can get out of body as a kid. And I get out, get, got out of body the same night. So that was the thing. And there are tons of things we can do to get out. This is just a few very, like, small tips. There are tons of others, like, there are tons of other tips I can get to you. But it's kind of late. I should wrap it up for the day and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, you know, tell me if, if you... Try to any of these and if it worked, sorry about my hair. Uh, but if you have any other tips, tips for this whole thing, please share. Because I totally haven't said most of it, you know. But anyway, yeah. So if you are smoking and trying any psychedelics, please tell me and share your, your experiences. Because it's interesting to see if, you know, like you're trying it and doing it uh, like often. And how it affects your out-of-body experiences. And, you know, how is the whole thing happening. So yeah, share your thoughts, I'm interested in hearing it and learning from you, and I hope you had any value from this video. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye.